the best uh, kindergarten uh, in the world. So um, they are experts of space for children. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions. So during the lecture, you can write questions in comments. Uh, you can do it uh, in many options because you can write questions in comments on YouTube. You can also write questions uh, on Facebook, but also uh, the conference participants can write uh, questions uh, on Zoom, uh, in the comments in the chat panel. So um, after the lecture, we will read your questions to our guests. So we really invite you to be active during the event because you would like to have a discussion in the end of the conference. So I think that uh, there um, is um, nothing more to say. So hello, Takaharu and Yui. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Just one, uh, Takaharu, please, just a, uh, one, uh, one additional information. Uh, Takahara decided that he would like to make a short break, so mm. write his lecture in two parts. And Takahara will be the person who lets you know where this uh, short break will be uh, taking part. Okay, so welcome yeah. Takaharu. Uh, the all audience is yours, and so we are listening. Thank you. We thank are you for all ears. Thank you for being with us. How are you? Fine. Fine. Thank you very much. So yeah. That's great. So that's our tradition of the Master of Architecture series that we usually do a coffee break in the middle. So today we are online, but we can keep the tradition. So mm -hmm. of the lecture, uh, you can ask uh, all the participants to have a coffee break. Okay. okay. We make sure we have a coffee. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use? Yes, yes. Okay, so we are ready. <laughs> uh, we share. Yeah. Okay. Key. Okay. okay. So, so shall we start or shall we? Yes, I think okay. you're yes. gonna. You could I think you're gonna. So did you finish your introduction? Okay, have you finished mm -hmm. the introduction? Intra introduction? Okay, so so okay. I finished the introduction. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our great guest uh, directly from Tokyo, Yui Tezuka and Takaharu Tezuka. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. You know, we went to uh, Poland a few times, so. No, we know uh, your country, and uh, we had a very good time, and uh, and uh, I wish uh, we could be there, but uh, I hope we can do that next year, Maggie. Right? I think we yes, try. Yes, I hope so. Uh, next year, okay. Looking forward. And uh, as you can see, I'm we are red and blue, and uh, people uh, people think uh, I'm wearing the same T-shirts all the time, but it's not true. Uh, we I have more than one hundred. So just uh, it's cream, and uh, you is also same, and uh, maybe it's time to sh tell some story about it. But uh, before that, I need I need to start sharing the screen. Is it okay? Yes, yeah. of course. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna screen. Okay, start. And uh, okay. Okay, let me start. Okay. okay, let us start. Let us start. As you can see, red, red, red and blue, and uh, and uh, I'm going to show you my my family, our family. Yeah, red, we are blue. red and blue, and my daughter is yellow, and uh, my son is green. Yeah, when we when we had a had a, had a daughter, we decided everything we share is yellow, so uh, the the daughter became yellow and when we got son uh we thought uh, he would be in yellow too but uh, my daughter said he should be in green so he became green so we are uh, four primary colors and then you tell the reason why we uh, start introducing our family because everything we do is uh, starting uh, from a family you know when you design something for the children you know, it's nothing better than uh, learning from the children. Some, some, when I was making lecture at Harvard, one of my students made a question. How can I learn about the children as you can do? You know, we want to know more about the kids. And I told him, oh, do you have your girlfriend? And he said, yes. So ask your girlfriend to get married. And uh, eventually you get the child. And you understand it. So that's the basic of our design. So let uh, uh, my boss to talk about it. 
。OK?
uh, the, how can I say, one of the architects criticized us and nobody used the roof uh, because the uh, roof is very hot in summer and very cold in winter. And the when, when the family read that article, they got angry and they said, in summer, it's very hot. So they climb up on the roof uh, in the morning or in the evening. And in winter, it's very warm uh, after, uh, in the afternoon. So how can I say, we architects try to control the environment too much, but the, how can I say, we, it's easier to choose the environment uh, which is comfort, comfortable to us. Yeah, it's quite simple, just like a cat. You know, instead of just uh, controlling the environment, you can find a good environment. So it's just, we should move by yourself. It's awful kitchen. This is a kitchen, <laughs> cheapest kitchen we have designed. That's and this is a shower. Uh, when we designed this shower, I, we thought that the, uh, the clients want to want shower uh, because uh, they want to take shower in summer. And we thought that the, the younger sister would take shower here. But one day they, uh, the wife called us and she said, it's very nice to take hot shower in Typhoon. Uh, the wife was quite, uh, uh, quite uh, the, the wife was using this shower very seriously. No, no, just I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, you know, she said that it's nice to take a uh, hot, hot shower in a cold typhoon. So my wife said, uh, I mean, you said, uh, well, you have to be careful. And she said, uh, don't worry, I'm wearing t-shirts. So I don't think she understood what we are, what we are worried about. So, but they are using it. Huh? And this is a ladder to climb up on the roof. And there are many ladders and the, uh, the, all the windows can be opened by hand and the children are looking down and the, their friends are uh, popping out from the uh, window, uh, the skylight. Just like a game all the time. You know, just a head that popping up. So you feel, uh, you, you feel like to get the hammer to hit their head, head off. That is a feeling you get on top of the roof. Hi. When you see the red and blue couple sitting on the edge of the roof, you can see red and blue socks. So this roof, is, uh, you, you can see how important the, this roof is very thin. Then, uh, uh, after we built the roof house, we called a call from the, how can I say, the principal of the Fujikina Garden. He said he wants, we, he wants us to design a kind of roof house for 600 children for his, uh, uh, for his kindergarten. And when we visit this kinder, uh, Fujikina Garden, uh, the building was very old and shabby, but the atmosphere was very, uh, quite good. There are huge, uh, some huge trees and uh, uh, huge, huge playground and so many uh, rabbits and uh, uh, animals over there. And uh, we can hear the voice of the children, children. So we want to keep that kind of atmosphere. Uh, keep Almost already atmosphere. declined the project. You are fine over there. So, so just to stay there, you don't, you don't need the architect. And he got really upset. So he, he, he tried to convince me and uh, that we have to design the kindergarten. So the, he was showing all the leaking point of the disputing. Actually, this is really awful, the shabby. So we started designing, okay? So we, we come, came up to this kind of uh, design. So there is, uh, the old building was standing on the edge of the, uh, on the edge of the uh, corner, on the edge of the corner. So the principal was walking along the uh, corridor, but he couldn't, uh, he, he just, he need to go back and forth. So we decide, decided to make this building circle. So the principal can keep uh, walking around all day long. Yeah, he doesn't and, know how to end. So he keep running around all day long. And also ch children can, uh, can running around on the roof. And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, like roof house, we have many skylights to look down the classroom. 
and also we have a uh, slider and stairs. Yeah, and the uh, trees are popping through uh, from the uh, uh, popping through in the, in the classroom. Hi. And uh, it is it was uh, difficult to keep the tree in the middle of the uh, building because the way if you cut cut the road the tree dies so we try to we try not to cut the road so we we excavate the uh, bottom of the tree and we found out how the road is going. How the root is, uh, how can I say, how the, where the root is. And we designed a special base at, uh, which doesn't cut the root. So around the, around the tree, we don't have any base, base beam. And yeah, foundation. Yeah. But my point is, if you've got this building, you know, it's not the perfect geometry, it's a, a, a collection of uh, triangles. So and uh, so this uh, this landscape is controlling the you know the foundation. The trees are more important than the building. That's the point. Okay. And this is how it is built. And when we showed the uh, Lu house to the principal of the Fujigina Garden, he said, "Oh, uh, it's nice. Uh, he doesn't want any handrail on this kindergarten too." But uh, we said it, it may be difficult, but he, he was quite serious. He, he said, how about uh, uh, sticking out a net uh, right on the edge of the roof? Do you understand? To, you know, just that if you, you have a net on the edge of the roof, you to, can catch your children falling off. And he was trying to convince us. And uh, somehow we are convinced. <laughs> yeah, somehow we are convinced. Uh, uh, so uh, we couldn't keep his idea around and, the edge of the road. You know, just, uh, huh? you know. Mm -hmm. you know, then, you know so then we went to city hall. And then and then we submitted the plan and the handrail drawings. And of course, you know, our government official said, it's impossible, you have to have a handrail. So, and I went back to the Fuji Kindergarten and the telling principal, and they said that we are crazy. And uh, you are, he said, uh, we are insane. And then, Principal said, you have to go back. So we went back to city hall. And then uh, the attitude of the officers are completely different. And they realized, you know, they got a phone call for Fuji kindergarten. You know, and uh, they have been running kindergarten a very long time. And uh, if they are running kindergarten for 70 years and then raising uh, 600 children, it means all people in city hall are from the Fuji kindergarten. And they have been trained to listen to principal. So they are over 40 years old, but they are still children from this kindergarten. So principal says, oh, we don't want handrail. And they listen to the principal. That is what happened. So in the principal is much more important than mayor, important than the mayor, you know? Mayor has election every four years. He doesn't have a, an election. So he controls everything. So. You know, it, it's impossible to do the same thing for other project, but but he can do many things. But by the way, you could keep I we couldn't. Of, of course, we have to have a handrail around on the edge, but we could keep the idea around the tree. So there is no handrail, just a rope. But the four children, uh, uh, they don't care their handrail at this rope at all. So they keep falling off to the trees yeah more more and more and more and more, more. yeah the children love the trees and he he is eating the trees he loves it <laughs> okay yeah. good we designed uh uh of course we had to have a handrail around the edge of the roof but we designed a special handrail where children can sit around the hundred uh, sit on the edge of the roof so this, the gap between the bars is a uh, 110 millimeter. So the head doesn't pop out, but uh, they can uh, pop the legs, uh, their legs out. So, th so when the children, when children sit along this edge, for well, 500 children can sit along this edge, so they can see the what's going on in the in the garden. 
it's like zoo smoking zoo feeding, feeding time, time. <laughs> and the good thing about this uh uh roof is that the roof is very low so we can see the uh what's happening on the roof and the, what's going on in uh, under the roof uh, at the same time uh, the ceiling height is only 2.1 meter uh, when this uh, build, uh kindergarten was uh, finished uh, the, uh, the construction was complete completed uh, we were surrounded by the 500 children and it was so amazing and uh, and after that we were selected uh, one of the best school in the in 50 years you know, no, 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 my point is you know when we designed Fuji kindergarten we are in trouble because it's not square you know believe me Japan is no different from Europe so always they had a very you know very rigid uh, you know you know bureaucrats saying oh you have to keep all the school our classroom to be square you have the wall all the time and the high ceiling and they also you are not supposed to put kids on top of the roof and then we broke all the rules because the uh, owner said oh you know i'm paying they are not paying so you do what we want and then they are blaming us and then suddenly change happened you know uh, you know oecd and unesco and the united nation try to find the best school buildings in the world, including university, high school, and uh, you know, uh, junior high school, elementary school. And uh, they selected uh, this building to be the best in the world. You know, there are more than 166, more than 106 submiss submissions from 30 countries. And the interesting thing about the Japanese government is that they don't listen to Japanese, they don't listen to Korean, they don't listen to Chinese, that they listen to Europeans, they listen to Americans. And suddenly, government said, oh, it's wonderful building. So I'm gonna give, we're gonna give you, uh, no, uh, you know, a uh, Mister prize. And suddenly, we went to point, we went to Paris, you know, we got a uh, delegate came along with us. So we got the very, uh, we got the very nice time. And then when we came back, and this red lady became the one to set up a new standard for the kindergarten. So good thing is about this project, we as a government, we don't need to worry about anything. That is what happened. Uh, there is no uh, vertical drainage in this kindergarten. So when it rains, the water comes from this gargoyle and the children love to uh, touch the rain. And this is the leg washing place. You can see this boy is not washing his legs. He's putting water in his boot. And in this kindergarten, all the sliding, all the sliding door can be open. So there are six rails. So when the, all the doors is open, the windows become one to six. And this is a classroom. We, are, we don't have any war between classrooms. So you can hear the uh, voice of the uh, children from next classroom. Yeah, you know, there are many things I need to talk about uh, this picture. First of all, in a mostly outside, unless there's a kind of storm coming uh, usually they, they, they keep this window, these windows of the open. So, and there's always uh, there people to say something about it. You know, there are, and before the corona, until corona, corona thing happened, you know, there used to be more than few, few thousand visitors every month, a lot from outside Japan. And there are many, uh, you know, specialists, pedagogical specialists. And one of the German specialists came and she said, oh, you know, kids are get, going to get wet. What are you going to do? And the kindergarten, kindergarten principal, Mr. Kato said, oh, in Japan, when kids get wet, they change. What do you do in Germany? And then um, and the, the lady said, you know, even if they change, 
and kids get wet. What would you do? And principal said, oh, in Japan, usually kids are waterproofed, so you can wash them clean. So now, my point is that the, the, you know, the, you don't need to take care of this too much. You can see, you know, it's rainy day, they don't stay inside, they stay outside. You can see they are waterproofed. And one more thing I need to tell you, you know, these days, you know, uh, in the specialists are really worried about the noise from next classroom. But if you think carefully, you go to the bar to talk to your friends, okay? It's not exactly quite the place, okay? And the more, sort of, more thing I need to tell you, I can show you one interesting slide. You know, this is not Japan, it's Bali. And it can hear the noise. And the point we were oh, sorry, point we were uh, uh, listening to this uh, ritual, you know, I could hear all the music, but the point we came back, we found out the beep like this. What is that? You know, it was so noisy. And then scientists who invited us told us, you know. You know, the noise is from jungle. It was there. But when you are in jungle, your brain cancels the noise. So that so that's the reason why you 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 are not listening to this background noise. You could listen to the uh, music. But the when you came came back to Japan, uh, that the, you are disconnected from surroundings and your noise noise cancer system stopped working. And there he, he was saying, you know, you should know your body is doing the same. You know, in, uh, if you dive under the water, you can listen to your breathing and also, you know, heartbeat or the kind of heart cardiovascular system sounds, veins, you know, this heartbeat. And because, you know, you are disconnected from the rest of the world, and then there's one more important thing I need to tell you. And when you design very quiet building for the kids, many people start discovering, you know, they start listening to their own body noise because they are disconnected from the rest of the world, you know, by good, beautiful architecture, okay? You know, we are the kind raised in jungle. So we are not supposed to be in background noise and um, and I wrote about it, you know, for, you know, the United Nation. And this is an interesting paper. If you want, I can give it to you. And uh, some uh, doctors uh, found out the kids are raised in special care. In special means a special room, it's a, it's not just a special care. You know, these days there are kids from rich family in China and they put kids into very quiet room because they think it's better for their kids. But actually, doctor found out that is, calling, uh, that is causing lots of mental disorder. So my point is, you know, as you make things very quiet, you know, they started getting nervous. And the scientists explained, you know, in jungle, silence is danger. Because in the jungle, always a background noise. But when silence comes, predators, coming to eat you. So the kids get nervous. It's quite natural. So, you know, uh, you know, through these slides, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, as you get better environment, you know, sometimes spoil the kids, okay? You know, these days we actually try to make perfect environment, constant temperature, no bacteria, you know? You try to make something clean. Okay, but we are supposed to be in noise. At the same time, we are the correction of huge number of the bacteria, okay, microscope life form. And so we are not the kind to be pure, clean, quiet space, okay? So if you look at this building, it looks so primitive, you know, open to, to the world, okay? So people think, oh, so it means uh, their idea is that, you know, and this red and blue axis idea is that, okay, we shouldn't do anything, but it's not true. 
you know, we need to control uh, the environment as we can enjoy because we are not the kind to eat nuts and the uh, skin of the trees. You know, still we need to cook it and we need to be in control of the environment, not, but not too much. That degree is very important. And to do that, you need to have a very sophisticated uh, architecture. If you look at this, you know, some people say, oh, there's no column, very small number of the columns. But you should know Japan is aspect country. You know, the you know, seismic activity causes uh, 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 the movement of twice of the gravity sideways. It's the earthquake in Tokyo is really strong. You know, it destroys everything, but this building stand because we have latest structure analysis. And this is a very strong building, but we have very small column. And also noise, our noise station in this building is quite well controlled. So it means you feel, you feel really comfortable in here. And this is a nostalgic future I'm talking about. I think I, we wrote about it. You know, you know, when you think about the future, you know, you shouldn't think uh, things like, uh, you know, you know, uh, Tron, movie Tron. As things get more real, technology become invisible. For example, you know, look at this, this, this thing, you know, this, uh, I, this telephone. It's almost invisible, you know. And also, we, our kids are using this like a paper, okay. You know, we are, we were raised in Stone Age. So you think this is very something very special, but for our kids, it's there's no difference between pencil and this phone. So my point is, as we our technology gets more advanced, you know, our technology architecture become invisible, very become very very normal. So you don't need to feel it, but it's there it's there to help you to have a real good life. But the real good life doesn't mean controlled. You know, it's about real human life. You know, how you can be a part of nature, how you can be a part of the world. You know, that's the point. I can keep talk talking about this, but I think we have to move on. I think I think I should give this back to Yui. Okay. 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 Yes, you can keep. Okay. We can move on. Okay. Hi. Mm. This okay after this. I, okay. No, it's okay. This is my book from okay. Harvard. And to divide a classroom, we designed a kind of our uh, uh, boxes. Uh, this is quite lightweight box. Uh, children can carry by themselves. And uh, this is the workshop with children. Uh, they didn't help us at all. Yeah, they're praying and uh, yeah, they look. They don't work. Yeah, they don't work. <laughs> It's not to bring, he, he did, it, did it by himself. Yeah. And then the teacher um, uh, made, uh, uh, teacher uh, put the, these boxes and he, he arranged it like so this. They improvise. Yeah. Huh? And it works for exhibition quite well. So uh, they can change the arrangement uh, every month. This is exhibition. And uh, because we don't have any wall, uh, we designed a special well to uh, for the for the hand washing place. Yeah, so wash basin. No? Wash basin. So the and children uh, have to communicate to wash their hand because there are two uh, tap two water tap. two water tap, but uh, uh, there are four people. Uh, we think that they uh, it's. Quite, it's important for the children to communicate to do anything. Yeah, these days they talk to the you know playstations and those iPhones, other things. Yeah. They don't talk to uh, each other. But in Japan, this kind of talk is called uh, well side talk. You know, you know, ladies and the boys used to talk around the well because that's the best place to you know communicate because they have to face each other. So we are trying to you know recreate such a kind of situation. Christmas type. Time it looks Christ good. Yeah. Time for Christmas. And tree is uh, just in the middle of the classroom. And so the children can feast their friends. Monkeys. Monkeys. The 
monkeys. Yeah, they can looking down and they can look down the cross so yeah it's they are quite cute. This is where Santa yeah. Claus comes down you know out every year at the time, time of, of Christmas, Christmas. No? yeah there is no wall so the switch is hanging down from the ceiling so if when you pull this uh, string you can lead the uh, three light bulbs. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is how it is built. And nice donuts, huh? Um, this is the uh, movement of the boy from 9, 10 to 9, 30. To 10 past 9 to yeah. 30 past 9. Only 20 minutes, he make a, a three, a three rounds around the roof. So it means that he rounds to 600, 600 meter in 20 minutes. So it's quite unusual for the uh, for the kindergarten. Actually, it's more. You know, he he made about six thousand meters in the morning before lunchtime, and the surprise is not yet to come, because average of movement of kids in this kindergarten is about four thousand meters in in the morning, and usually it's about eight hundred meters. So it's five times more. And so kids from this kindergarten sleep quite well after you go home. Okay. 大きな楕円形の建物。傾斜のついた屋根はそのまま運動場として使える。そしてこの屋根に上がった子供たちは手塚夫妻が思い描いた通りほとんど例外なく全力で走り出すのである。<笑> で、ここ there are more than 21 yes and you know yeah we we we, we uh you know we picture uh we, we filmed it from drone you know it's okay huh? and after that the, the principals of the fuji kindergarten asked to design ask us to design our English classroom next to the kindergarten. So we built a huge kindergarten, so there is no space left. So we designed a very small uh, uh, building uh, around the tree. And this is a building about uh, around the tree. And uh, we try to make as many floors. Uh, there, so there are six floors, uh, seven floors in, the, in five meter. So everything we designed in kids scale and everything uh, we try to make this uh, structure as as seen as the uh, tree branches. The good thing is that you know this this used to be uh, interesting thing is that this used to be illegal. You know there used to be the limitation of ceiling height. But after the prize from OECD and the United Nations uh, uh, this really became the one to set up new standard. So you know, we as a government, we can do whatever we want. We don't need to worry about ceiling height anymore. That's good, no? So when we design this kind of, kind of building, uh, we need to know what's, uh, the, where uh, there must be a dangerous point for children. So we took our children here and uh, they, they started play and we tested with them. And he hit his head. He's here. okay, he's my son, he's resilient. He doesn't die, you know. Yeah. He got very strong, strong yeah. scar. That's and he tried to see if he can uh, jump off from here. And then uh, after that, the children of the kindergarten are getting. And you can see there the uh, traffic jam here. Yeah, the traffic is awful in Tokyo. Yeah. And he he tried to jumping off. Yeah, it's a, just right dosage of danger. It's very important for them to grow. Yeah, he's helping his friend to climb up. 
this kind of activity is very important for the kindergarten, for the kids. And there is no furniture. And there is no furniture in the classroom because uh, uh, the principal doesn't want any furniture in the classroom. So this uh, floor become uh, chairs and uh, tables. So architecture is a kind of like a, uh, things, uh, things like architecture acts like a furniture. My daughter my used daughter. to be like that. Huh? My daughter. Children love to touch the ceiling because they usually can touch the ceiling. Ceiling. Yeah. She's not like that anymore. <laughs> this is after view after dark. Okay. Hi. I think just I think we should go for break. You know, five minutes, ten minutes break. Can you do that? Okay. That's good. So, okay. so now we do ten minutes of a coffee break. So it's time for you to have a tea or to have a coffee. Uh, okay. A very smart I, think, coffee, I must say. The lecture. I think you, you saw enough donuts, right? <laughs> yeah, and once again, thank, thank you for all your questions that you are asking. And uh, we also, we still encourage you to ask questions anywhere. Uh, in and after this, just we have more little more talk, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's, let, let's have a break. Okay. Okay. So see you in ten see you minutes.
でまあ向こうがビートしてはい。Can we resume? I think still there are people coming so, back. I, I think so. I, I think that we can continue. So, Tomas, could you let us know if you are live? <laughs> okay, so hello again. Uh, and uh, we invite you to listen uh, to the second part of the lecture. And still, we ask you to, we encourage you to write your questions uh, in comments on YouTube, on Facebook, or on Zoom. Uh, that's for the conference participants. Uh, so we are really counting on having uh, a discussion after the speech. So Takaharu and Yui, uh, the voice is yours. Okay, okay. nice to be back. Okay, uh, people think I'm a donut shop because we designed a very nice donuts, but we have other merchandise. So we need to show you some more, okay? Oops, how come it's not working? It's moving. Okay, you know that this is a tsunami happened in Japan and it's amazing uh, wave and the maybe um, more than I think uh, 15,000 people get killed. And there's a story about this building. There's a lady stayed in the building to the last moment saying, you have to leave the town, you have to leave the town. But nobody believed because tsunami comes only for every 400 years. Nobody's alive since last big tsunami. So even she didn't believe tsunami is reaching her point. So she died in the tsunami and she became a song and she became regent. And there's another superhero and the, the monk on the middle. He said, okay, if earthquake happens, big earthquake happens, you have to come to my temple because he knows if you go to old temple, you can survive because in Japan, you know, buildings, our old timber buildings are exceeding 1,000 years quite easily. So it means that if the building has been there more than 1,000 years, I know that's the place is safe. And the old buildings, you know, after, you know, 400 years, you know, get washed away in the lower ground. So if you want to find a high, safe, safe place, you have to find the old temple. And this is how the promener, true tree promener used to be. But there's an interesting fact. All trees are 400 years old because all these, kid, all these uh, trees were killed. Their parents are killed 400 years ago because tsunami comes like a clockwork. And at the end of promenade, there's a temple, okay? And tsunami came this high, okay? This is not me, my, I know, my stuff, <laughs> brew. So, and uh, so all these trees get killed because the uh, water stayed in a half day. You know, tsunami is not just wave. Water comes up and stays half day. And so all ground uh, gets salted and all tree dies. And all these huge trees died. And the, the Japanese government said, oh, we're gonna chop this off chop these trees off to make electricity. But Loka said, don't do it because they know that this is a kind of property. And so we tried to save it. And the UNICEF came. UNICEF said, you know, could you help us to design another kindergarten? Because kindergarten get washed away, another washed away. And the Loka people, need a place to put their kids while they are trying to recover the village. And uh, UNICEF said, we don't have much money. 
So we just, we can design temporary building. I said, no, 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 we can have a permanent building. Where? In front of you, you know, these trees are free. So I said, okay, can build it. Yes, I can, without thinking. So we chopped it off. So instead of uh, you know designing a temporary temporary a temporary building, we decide we decided to build the things for four hundred years. I can tell the reason later. And then, you know, the, uh, you know there's uh, so much defect, so many defect about uh, columns because uh, timbers, because you know, you know it's not it's a uh, natural tree, very heavy about two tons, <laughs> you can lift it off. Huge solid timber. And in Japan, we have uh, in our knowledge of using uh, our knowledge and wisdom to use, uh, you know, huge uh, timber. And uh, each timber got about uh, two meters, more than two meters circumference. And when you use it, you know, you have to make sure, you know, you take the center of the columns out, crumb out. Because otherwise, a column breaks like a pineapple. And we try to use, uh, you know, uh, old uh, joiner technique. Because we know that if you use the proper joiner technique, it survives more than 400 years. Our mission is making building for next 400 years. It means for next tsunami. We built this. And this looks like a temple because it's a part of temple. Now, kids are back. <laughs> so this building is not just a building. It's a message, time capsule for the children, 2411. Because that time, next big tsunami will come. And this building is going to tell kids, you know, if an earthquake happens, you have to come to me and your life will be saved. So time capsule. Now, this is how the pronouns is looking like, and we are putting trees back. So 400 years from now, tree will grow, and we I will come back to build next kindergarten. So you will see next kindergarten 400 years from now. So you see how the kindergarten is looking like. Oops, okay. And uh, you know, this, this used to be on middle now. because some people are writing the comments that uh, they can't uh, hear you when uh, you are showing the videos because uh -huh. the music is okay. too loud. So perhaps okay. it would be better if you can volume, uh, volume it down okay. uh, computer okay. and then it will be easier to hear what you are saying. Okay, now I can give okay. you... Thank you very much. Very low. Hold on, hold on. Just, I think it's... Uh... Oops. Okay, now. Okay, you can do it now. Okay. Thank you, Takaharu. We'll, we'll tell no you. No sound. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, you can hear yes, you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. okay it's still too loud. Okay. It's okay. volume. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I think... Uh... Oops. 
if something wrong went wrong. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay. I think uh, maybe while I'm running movie, I can keep quiet, okay? Okay. Okay. And, yes. and after that, I can talk. I'm going to show okay. you the movie. Thank you, Takaharu. Thank you. Okay. We can keep running. Uh, this is better, like this. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. I think it's better. With this. I can move um, um, just, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, you know, music. My, yeah. with the music like this. So you can see that, you know, kids allowed yes. to run upstairs down. See, you know, it's so, you know, you don't need to do any training. They keep running like this. And all these are made of uh, local timber. So this is a message you made, okay? You know, they use, this place used to be the middle of the forest. Everybody moved to high ground. This is how... The sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Hold on, just I think uh, we should make it uh, a bit more quiet. Hold on. To come. Cut. How can I sound, control sound? No? Yeah, it's better. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few more projects for discussion. This is uh, in a, a kind of uh, three-dimensional playground. I worked with uh, artist uh, uh, Toshiko Makadam. It's a pile of the timber. My point is you don't need to tell kids what they should do. You can see that the kids are in the net. They keep moving around. Okay. I feel this is real architecture. Okay. This is my favorite picture. And there's no need to make furniture because they nest in the building, in the building. And always father is tired. And my son, he used to be like this. He used to be very cute. Not like this anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you another kindergarten. Actually, this became the best prize uh, for uh, the school building uh, in WA, World World Actually Festival. And it look, this looks like a Caesar umbrella. And then my point is not uh, not to make uh, any uh, 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 you know, dead end. Okay. You can keep running around. So we build things like this. Okay. So no, no dead end. Okay. And uh, we made a pond. <laughs> And then after she came to this By the way, we keep getting uh, requests to design the donuts in the it's a cold place. So we decided to make it inclined so you get more, you can get more sun. And the kids, then kids keep running like this, running, running all the time. This is normal movement. And this is a favorite place. They like something underneath. And there's one more, this is a project, a very important project for us because, uh, you know, I'm the president of one of the museum now, I'm running it. And that the project is called A Dish of Kids. You know, we were originally, we were asked to design, uh, you know, children museum. But if you go to children museum, usually you have to put your kids in the museum and the parents go somewhere, you come back. 
And I didn't like that idea because uh, that separate, you know, uh, the parents from the kids. So I said, okay, maybe you should go for idea of zoo. If you go to zoo, you can stay with the parents. Kids can stay with the parents. And uh, of course, we don't have uh, money to buy, you know, rhinos, you know, zebra, you know, elephant. So we put kids instead of, you know, animals. So we made uh, this kind of idea, making a huge dish like this. We put kids, we put kids instead of animals. We made something like this. Very soft dish, okay? Because of Corona, you know, we couldn't do so much event. But now just we are making... My daughter is looking like now, you know? We are making a balloon monster, okay? And this is uh, an event we are organizing. By the way, this is my wife. Please relax. If you go to, you know, normal theater, you have to be quiet. This is what's going on. This is also stopping. And also, when there's nothing, you can show you what they do. Go, go! Iso, Iso! Oh, tonda, tonda, tonda! Tonda, tonda! <laughs> so my point is, you know, parents also used to be a kid. So it also you can manipulate their mind too. You know, so we as architects to, to manipulate. <laughs> This is a race for small kids, and uh, there's a, you, you know, piano. No. And this is my you know, name card. And I can show you how we make things inside. Using balloons. With rockets. Now we don't just design architecture interior, we design, you know, events too. Okay, and also we now just are installing these kind of things. <laughs> so I think it's getting really long. So we're gonna show you a list of the project very quickly. You know, the Tokyo, no, Japan is not just only you know, one place. And from top to the bottom, it's more than 2,000 kilometers. So in when south of Japan is 30 degree or 20 degree, and uh, north of Japan goes under minus 30. So there are about uh, 70 degree temperature difference in Japan. So sometimes, some area, you get the very, very heavy snow. This is a building in very, very snow, snowy village, you know, snowy village. So in the winter it used to be like this. They used to make a tunnel to go to another side. So we built the project, but the project architects complained, oh, I can't get my site. So somehow she prevailed and she get it, you know? And then you can climb up the top of the roof and the snow piled up within two days. Amazing amount of snow. 
But in summer, we can open up the site. And my point is, sometimes you, know, you try to design things for harsh weather, but most of the time you have very good weather anywhere in the world. In Poland, summer is nice, you know, in the spring is nice. So we, we designed the architecture to transform the environment, the market. So it's not just a stylish architecture, it changes. This is what we do. And I think just I'm gonna show you some churches we designed. I don't need to explain, I don't think we need to explain this okay, much because we, ha we have two mid projects. We have done more than 200 projects. I can't show you all, but if you have a chance to come to Japan, I'm gonna show you all the churches too. Uh, by the way, do you know who he is? He's Peter Cook. He's pretend pretended to be the pastor Uh, by the way, they, they are the project architects. I told them, if you don't finish the project on time, you are not going to have a wedding. So they worked very hard. Uh, the church. Okay, uh, this is a very interesting uh, ponding for baptism, you know, uh, the, the pastor said, you know, this is very nice. Usually, you know, it takes time to convince people to become a Christian, but this time, you know, we don't need to uh, convince them because they step into the water is, uh, uh, spontaneously. They get baptized without thinking. Looks like a black stone. It works very, quite well. Anyway, so many things I need to talk about. I think it's too much. And this is a chamber of commerce of the industry. You know, we try to uh, keep the feeling of a world heritage factory. You know, this factory is uh, was quite famous to have a first labor law in Japan 130 years ago. You know, they they at uh, the working hour that time was limited up to um uh, up to seven and a half hour. It's much better than my life. They had a weekend and they had the best uh, you know, care. And the worker get trained in the factory. Eventually they became a leader of the other, you know, uh, other factories. So this is what this, this, uh, this factory wasn't just only the first uh, modern, fact, modern silk factory. This is became the kind of academic, academic center. Some of them became professor in the courier, other things. So some people say, oh, this is another labor camp. It's not, actually this became, uh, this used to be very, very academic. And then uh, we said, no, we can't just make same thing. We should keep the idea, but still we want future because this town uh, uh, is making space rockets too. They make, uh, they made us, uh, that this town made a space rockets to send a, uh, you know, some kind of you know prong and, and, and some kind of the probe to asteroid, and the probe brought the stone back to Japan, and it's a, the company is called new uh, sub company it's called IHI, so I said okay timber but same time it's the future, so geometry is making the structure to be to be strong it's a monocoque structure, they can hold like this, and also keeping some old uh, passage and this is. Uh, Refurbished old the warehouse. The right hand is continuation of the old building. So as you go to the back side, you become futuristic. This side is really past. So it's like a time capsule. On this side, you go back to 130 years ago. Another side is future. So one side is like this. Looks like a Millennium Falcon. Okay, do you know Millennium Falcon? Han Solo? And you go down and from the outside like this. This alternative feeling is important. So inside we have structure like this. You know, being just and some people say, uh, you know, some timber structures are fake, but you know, as long as you see a project, no lie about it. You know, every structure member is working. There is no steel structure inside. 
you know that the, some architects are using a steel structure with timber attached. We are not like that kind. It's it's genuine timber structure. So now, uh, actually, this uh, pattern is derived from local architecture. <laughs> Some, uh, some more, you know, church. I know this church is trying to uh, go back to the origin of Christianity. And I got some idea from Egypt. This is where, you know, Moses left. You know? And this is uh, one of the church in uh, Croatia. By the way, her name is Maria. Interesting, huh? And then we built something like this. So we tried to make a uh, feeling just in the light is coming down through the very thick stone. And after deck, this, this project is not published so much yet. You see. <laughs> you know, interesting about Japan is that we have Christianity and the Buddhism and the Shinto. So when I go to Buddhism shrine, I pray for, you know, the Buddha. And in the afternoon, I go to church. I pray for God, Jesus Christ. And then we go for a Shinto shrine, you know. You know, when girl gets three years old, she go to Shinto shrine, a celebration. And then when she gets married, a lady get, want to get married, she wants to go to Catholic church. It looks nice. And then when she want to find that, uh, I find out, uh, you know, um, you know, graveyard, she go to temple. That is where she dies. So for Japanese these days, it's our, our you know, religion is just like uh, going, to, uh, picking up a convenience store or cafe, something like this. That is interesting. So the Japanese, Japan is in only in place you can build a mosque right next to Catholic church. Everything's are juxtaposed. We used to have uh, there 108 gods, you know? And the whole Jesus Christ came. Okay, welcome Japan. By the way, we have 108 gods waiting. So which I gave, we gave him a waiting card, just like a bank waiting list. Anyway. I don't think we need to explain. At the last project, we need to explain, okay? This area get the heaviest snow in the world. Snow piles up sometimes. 10 meters, but all snow disappears. So there is a, about 60 degree difference, temp, uh, temperature difference between winter and summer. Winter is minus 20, summer is 40 degree. So we built uh, you know, a museum a long time ago. And this is this shape derived from the passage existed before the construction. And there used to be rice paddies. It caught in steel. And uh, this looks like a small building, but it's not. Actually, if you can see a, a, a car, this is 160 meter long. Okay. And so it means this building uh, expand in summer in heat. So, you know, so the building is about 20 centimeter longer. So if you want to see bigger building, you should go for summer. In the winter, it was a bit smaller. And you have a big windows on the corners, huge window, 30 meter, uh, 30 meter long, four meter high, almost. And in the winter, okay, suddenly snow comes, 
five minutes a day. All this appears to the crevice. So if you, the, 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 you, you are stuck into a crevice in the winter, you have to wait until May to come up. You know, you'll be quite well preserved in snow. And then winter, you know, snow piles up. And the interesting about uh, this museum is that you can see the section snow. So if you are sucked in the crevice, you'll be quite well preserved behind the window. <laughs> this is how it's looking like. You know, so this is a museum, snow. You, now, just after this museum, people discovered underneath of snow is not dead, it's alive. It's a lot of life. And you can see a fox too, just like a section of an uh, ant nest. You know, the when, when start piling, snow start piling up, you know, Kurita said, oh, are you sure you can keep the snow? It looks dangerous. I said, oh, we designed it. You know, very thick acrylic panel, like aquarium. And, and they called us again. Are you sure it is okay? And structure said, just said, I think it's okay. We, we, we calculated. So I told curator, it looks okay. And they called us, scary. But now just nice light is coming in just before the snow crows, snow crows up the light. We call the lion snow, uh, tada ando effect. Now just in the slides, you can see how we raise the kids. You know, you think that you, know, you have uh, water is very dangerous, and she is uh, he used he was twenty four months old at that time, and right after that he started jumping in the water, started swimming. We didn't teach him how to swim. He didn't get drowned. This is how kids are supposed to be. Years old, he could dive swimming, no problem. You know, he could catch in semi the deep. This is how kids are supposed to be. And these days, you're really worried about the handrail, right? Yo. I'm not sure if you need a handrail. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have done this. He doesn't need a handrail. Now, I, at the end, I'm going to show you a video. Three minutes. This house was built uh, uh, 14 years ago when my daughter was born. This site is quite long uh, towards the south and north, and the view is north side. So we tried to let the light in from the south, so we make the solar roof shape and the sunlight comes through the skylight. idea for this house is every space is one put together and so uh, we have a long table like this everything happens around this table like to design architecture for permanence. Of course there is no permanence but it's I would say continuity. You know of course we can design this green house. But the but the house is not just about styles, you know? This the living style changes. This is a place to raise children. It's a nest, not a design. Just recently, we made a, a children's rooms. Yeah, the thing is, um, we're supposed to have only one bedroom, so we had to divide into three. And when we got the first child, uh, one of my friends gave me a good comment. You know, you are going through the most beautiful moment of your life. And the time will last 10 years, and the time will never come back. And I think as the, uh, we are feeling that fast uh, 10 years, you know, how it's changed. And my son is 11 years old. You know, it's at the time we have to separate the rooms for each member. So that's the first step of separation. But still, it's home, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So we try to divide the rooms into uh, three pieces uh, with uh, just the punches. But you know, uh, they're quite nice uh, tricks between rooms because it's made of furniture. Uh, we can make a small window, you know, so it can be just wall thing. So still the conversation is going on. So just, uh, uh, just we try to maintain a bit of uh, you know, privacy and also a bit of communication all the time. We like to design a house uh, capable of carrying memories. Usually, uh, we have to design, you know, bedrooms for the family members, and we happen to have just only one bedroom, so we have to share everything. But we realize it's good for family. You know, in the modern society, always there's separation between the family members. So, uh, but I remember, maybe it's the old Japanese member, and uh, we used to share space in Japanese house. You know, we used to have only, only paper partitions. And the bedroom uh, was supposed to be living room in daytime. So uh, we learn how to help each other, how to talk each other, how we, how we can live together, and that helps uh, us to live in uh, Japanese society. The Japan is a very small island, so if we don't cope with others, we can live oneness. Thought the house should be the kind of space they learned how to communicate and how to take care of another. The bonding formed in this room is going to last quite a long time. Thank you. So I think uh, that's it. So I think uh, we can have just a little break and then we can make a uh, Q&A. Or maybe we do we need a break? We, I don't need a break. Do you think we need a break? OK, so I think there is, there is no need to, to do a break. OK, so, we can go, go for a question. Yeah, so thank you very okay. much. Uh, this was great. I must say that you have a great uh, feeling and understanding of a human being. And uh, you prove it in uh, all of your projects, uh, no matter if it's for children, or it is for uh, adults. Um, Thank you. Okay, so now it's time to start the discussion. So uh, please let us know uh, what do you think? How do you like the lecture? What are your impressions? Um, and we invite you to ask questions uh, in the comments. Yes, so um, the lecture was amazing, but we have uh, some uh, question. Uh, okay. What, what fascinates and inspire you in architecture? And is there anything that you are afraid to regarding the future in the context? Uh, I mean, is it, is it two questions? Are there two questions? Yes, it, it's two questions. First, uh, first question is uh, what inspires you in architecture? But another question is, uh, uh, is there anything that you are afraid of re regarding the future in the in the context of architecture? Okay, uh, do you want to answer? Don't answer? Or I can answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, as I think I explained it, you know, our idea is coming from a family. So family is the most important. That is where we got all in, in, our inspiration from. And interesting thing is that when you get the kids, you know, we understand the kids. So we designed the kindergarten schools, okay? And uh, when, before we, uh, we had a kids, we tried, to, we tried to do much more stylish. And eventually my father get old and he died and we designed the graveyard, the temple. So it works from the beginning to the end. So just the life is within the family. Okay, it's quite simple. And the second question, what is afraid of? I think it's war. You know, still, you know, my, my biggest worry is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, this world is going for uh, misunderstanding, separations. People think Polish is different from Japanese. You know, Vietnam is different from Japanese. Uh, Americans different from, 
Egyptians. That is nonsense. There's only one kind called human beings. So as long as uh, human being exists, you know, we can design anything. Uh, we, we can have a happy life. So oneness, as I said, you know, it's the most important. I'm really afraid of losing that oneness. The, 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 thing, the things we should afraid is the war. That is the one we should uh, prevail, uh, prevent, I think. Yes, we agree with you. Uh, it's, it's the hard topic. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, uh, another question. Um, for example, um, Adam, Adam Gill, uh, Japanese architects tend to blur the boundaries between natural mm. and artificial. Blur exterior. boundary. Blur. Okay, yeah. okay. ambiguous boundary. Okay. And exterior. Mm. Uh, in your works, well as house, roof, house, uh, kindergarten, atelier in Ushimado, and others mm. who seem to take a similar approach. What is your mm. attitude to this approach? Um, yeah, I think uh, you know, I need to tell you a story. You know, <laughs> you know, long time ago, they time. Used to get, you know, there used to be an interesting cartoon. I lost it. You know, the cartoon was showing geisha girl, Japanese girls eating live fish like a pelican. Because, uh, you know, the newspaper is writing, you know, Japanese people are eating, uh, you know, raw fish. Okay. The news, the cartoon was more than 100 years old, you know, my 100 years ago. So they didn't understand the meaning of raw meat or the fish, raw fish, sushi or sashimi, these kind of things. But and physically, you know, scientifically, sashimi is just raw meat. But it's not just raw meat. To get the nice sashimi or uh, no, sushi, you need to have a very, very sharp knife, quite forged, forged, well forged by craftsmen, you know. Japanese cooking knife is extremely sharp, you know, just like a Japanese sword. And also you need to have a very good chef, you know, very well trained. And then one of the chefs showed me uh, the different thickness of the meat and it changed the taste. But if you analyze scientifically, it's same meat. My point is that, you know, same thing tastes differently if you do different setup. Um, and then another story, one of the Japanese uh, you know, tea master told the ruler of Japan, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna sh invite you to very interesting uh, tea ceremony. And he served the water right next to the small stream. And the ruler said, oh, no, this is uh, in a water. But the team master said, no, this is not just the water. The water is coming from upstream, a long, time, long way up. So then I brought this from long way up, so it tastes better. But truth is, he got the water just in front. The story made that things tasty. And when we try to make a sangha set up for human being, we have to be very, very precise, like uh, making uh, sashimi or sushi. And we have to have a very sharp knife. That is architecture. You know, some people say, oh no, rooftop of architecture is just nature. So why do we need architecture? I said, we need architecture because it's not uh, we are not designed to be in nature. You can't eat nuts. You can't eat uh, tree skin. You know, you have to cook things. So same thing. And if you want to in enjoy the nature, you know, you have to make a pro you have to have a proper setting. Now for Japanese, long weave, and also some kind of partition. You know, it's called a folding screen. Called a, I know, in a biobu these very small gadget are setting. So for us, architecture is not enclosure. We are not making you know, ambiguous space between outside and inside. For us, there is no inside. There is no outside. 
this is we live in a part of nature. So how we take place, we make set up to uh, enjoy the nature nicely. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, good. Open space. <laughs> it's not open space. And how you can be a part of the whole existence. You know, that is a point. You know, in Europe, okay? I'm not sure, you know, maybe it's not the same in Poland, but, the, you know, architecture is defined as a shelter, okay? Mm -hmm. So when Yong Utsun came to Japan, he said there is no architecture because there is no enclosure. So he didn't think Japanese architecture is architecture. He's, he thought just a roof or partitions. But for us, it's architecture because architecture is not the enclosure. It's set up. How you can, how, how this is a kind of manner to appreciate the existence of the whole world. Is it okay? Yeah, so thank and you for thank the you answer. So before reading you the, same, the, the, the next question, I will also like to add uh, that uh, there is also one more possibility of asking the question. It's only for the conference participants who are on Zoom with us. But uh, if you would like to uh, ask question live, you can raise your hand. So then uh, you can connect with us, uh, you can be visible and then ask the question live. So there is also such a possibility. But now I would like to read another question. So Takaharu Yuyu Yui, you emphasize in the lecture in the longevity of architecture as an important feature measured, as you said, in hundreds of years. This isn't very characteristic of Japanese architecture, of which temporality, 20, 30 years, seems to be a part for centuries. Is this your, mm -hmm. or is this a change that is spreading uh, nowadays? Why is sustainability important for you? Okay. You know, sustainability is only one way to survive in a full uh, human being, okay? And uh, you know, to do that, we need to sustain architecture. But maybe sustainability of architecture in Japan is maybe different from Europe. Stone can survive quite a long time. Timber cannot survive. So it means we have to replace the pieces of timber one by one. For example, there's a quite old temple called Horyuji that is 1,300 years old, okay? 1,300 years old. And, but one of, uh, some scientists in UNESCO saying, oh, this is not 1,300 years old. Because if you look at carefully, half of timber has been replaced in the history time to time. It's a kind of, it's a very natural, way to maintenance the building for Japanese. But in Europe, okay, you want to keep all things as long as you can, okay? So uh, it means in, in Japan, uh, timber architecture is a kind of living entity, okay? It, uh, things need to uh, be placed just like uh, your existence, your body, is made of the things you ate three months ago, sometimes two months ago. So everything gets replaced. Architecture is also the same. And with that kind of way, you know, architecture, Japanese architecture is always new, but same time old. So, so, so sometimes an old means new, same thing. Same, these uh, two uh, ideas can be juxtaposed. That is interesting. Sometimes you said, okay, 20, 30 years, long time. Sometimes 100 years, long time. And uh, uh, for us, there's no meaning. No? Old and uh, new can be, can exist same time. You know, if you go to Shibuya, you know, there are just place is very, very futuristic. Even I designed the highlights. And then lots of uh, TV screens, 
okay? There are projections, very, very futuristic. But if you look at the city planning, it's uh, really derived from all the history of the Tavare, Shibuya. So you can still, you can see all the part. So just like a Blade Runner, you know, do you know the movie called Blade Runner? And uh, some part is very old, some part is new. And there is no, you know, like inconsistency. It, old is not replaced with new thing. It's a kind of layers. And it's living with uh, new old thing is living within new thing. And that is Japan, I think. Is okay? Thank you very much. And the next questions belong, belong to Marta Sekulska-Wrońska. Uh, what are your prediction about the architectural response to COVID or similar threats? Hmm. Yeah, maybe how can I say, the COVID is a, now, it's a quite big topic for now, but how can I say, we human beings uh, have lived so long from us from from the ancient world ancient era to the, to this to the, to to now so architecture is always with us so i don't think uh on covid changed the architecture so quickly because the architecture is not the things things like that architecture has a more uh how, how can long I say? history it has a long history so COVID some kind of has uh, may have some kind of effect, but the, how the I can say the essence wouldn't be changed from COVID. Be me, nothing will change. People forget, and uh, your your work will come back. Don't worry, just try to survive. That's it. Okay, but uh, no, now we have separated. <laughs> yeah. Now just only uh, one only, or two uh, years. Yeah. Be me, the people who forget. I don't think anything changes. <laughs> yeah, we also have a comment from uh, the person who asked uh, the previous question. Uh, he writes that he thinks that concept of juxtaposition between inside and outside, old and new, artificial and natural is uh, a Western concept. And uh, he thanks you for your answer. But I would also like to ask you a question from YouTube. It's a question uh, written by Jacek Podleśny. In your projects, you underline the relationship between architecture and nature. What, in your opinion, is the obligation of architects in the face of the coming climate catastrophe? <laughs> you know, first of all, you should know, you know, this planet doesn't need human being. Even nuclear war, happens, uh, wildlife will prevail. And when these things, uh, these catastrophe happens, uh, uh, the, thing, the, the things get the trouble is us. So, you know, people think uh, what we can do for the nature, what's the obligation for the nature? You know, nature doesn't care. You know, you need to think, you know, the obligation is not for the nature, it's for our children. You know, what we can leave for our children, what, how we can uh, keep good thing, good environment for, you know, our descendants. That's the point. So I don't feel obligation, it's for us. It's a reality. That is how I think about. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Um, but we have we have uh, only five minutes left. Uh, left. Yes. So maybe a short question. Uh, do you have any advice for the young architect? Young architect. Young architect. Okay, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's very important to be yourself. You need to be unique. Actually, I always I get questions. How can I be important internationally? And uh, 
his answer is quite simple. You know, if you try to be international, you become one of the many. And the world doesn't need same thing anymore. Okay, but every human being is different. Even you are twin, you are different from brother or sister. So it means as long as you try to be yourself, you become unique and then unique will bring you to be important. And always I say, you know, being, being local lead you to be international because our world will need very uh, local people, local things. That is uh, you ultimately, it's okay. Okay, thank you. So we will we'll write to the last two questions. Okay, we'll read the last last two questions as uh, we have um, only time for that. So the first one is from Mera Sharifi. Uh, it's, Do you think if this is really possible to save the authenticity of historical layers in the new smart cities? Hmm. You mean there's a uh, I mean the old, authentic old uh, you know part of his uh, city, right? How we can save it, okay? Okay, yeah, it's possible, you know? And we are doing uh, that in Kyoto and other places. But, you know, you know, sometimes I feel, you know, it's not necessary to preserve everything as it was before because when you try to preserve everything as it was, it become artifact, you know? It's not alive anymore, okay? So my point is how we can transform, how, do, how, can, the, how can make the old historical piece to be library? I think that is only one answer. You know, if you are keeping everything like a museum, you know? And it's it's really you know artificial. I don't like it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And and the last uh, question: uh, In your experience, how do social systems influence architecture and its connection and understanding of humans? Social system. I don't understand the question. Could you make it? Could you elaborate? It's very big. Uh, it's a question from uh, Lucia Ashman. Um, Lucia <laughs> Ashman Momirski, the professor from Ljubljana, asking you the question whether the social structure influenced the understanding of human being. What kind of social structure? Okay. System, <laughs> educational system, system of, uh, I don't know, building uh, uh, social system supporting existing of the uh, 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 of the social structure yes. it's hard to say it's <laughs> maybe public relations. i think i think but architecture also okay maybe let me make short you know architecture mm -hmm. is nothing more than the shadow of social system so you know is it positive or negative in uh, both ways mm -hmm. because uh, you know act you know architecture cannot uh, exist without social system in good ways and the bad ways. You can see history. History tells it. You know, in the old old kind of you know uh, you know dictatorship, and also good democracy left something. That's a, so architecture is nothing more than the result. You know, so so we can't change the society, but. We okay, can but the question was life to be easier. Uh, uh, Takaharu, but the question was not if architecture can change society, but in what in what way, if it is the fact, the social structure influence the understanding of who the human is. Is the changing <laughs> humanity the understanding question. of humanity? Understanding of humanity, if it, with architecture. With architecture, yes. that means architecture can help people to understand the real that, existence. That, yeah, that is the question. Yes, this is the question for you. If he can, yeah, I think so. I think so, because for example, you know, uh, we designed uh, the hospital where 
parents can stay with the children suffering cancer, okay? And uh, because we made that architecture, just uh, the problem in society became obvious. And then people started thinking about these problems, okay? So architecture has really amazing power to make people start thinking about it. And also, you know, you know, there are so many projects I can talk about. You know, I, I don't have enough time, but uh, yes, you know, I can, uh, architecture has a power to, uh, you know, pe to make people aware of the many aspects of society. And we human beings, we are architects, we architects are, you know, given power, we are given power to make that architecture, okay? Okay, so addressing to Professor uh, Lucia Ashman Momilski, I think it's uh, just a topic for quite another <laughs> entire different conference, actually. I'm, I see. Mm -hmm. Especially that we have, I, uh, this is of course my impression, we, the, in the uh, presentation of Takaharu, or um, under the influence of presentation of Takaharu and Yui, uh, he revealed a lot, uh, was re were revealed a lot of uh, cultural differences in conceptualizing things, conceptualizing mm -hmm. and, and uh, differences in way of thinking. So it is quite mm. important, I think, that we not. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe but, it's true. Uh, we've discussed uh, it, Takaharu, when we were in Groznian, and this is, uh, I think, it's a very important topic for a lot of researchers for the future. But mm. it's important to understand that, that this is, um, before we start to evaluate anything in architecture on the theory, I, I mean, the theory as not useful for architects or architecture as absolutely without any theoretical background, we first have to put them together a research together, not separately. Mm. To, these differences, and then we can start to talk about the qualities of architecture. Yes, I agree. I think it's a very nice conclusion. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so that's a conclusion. That's a great conclusion to, uh, to end. So Takaharu, Yui, once again, many thanks for making time uh, to connect with us and giving the lecture. Of course, we hope that in the future, when the pandemic will end, uh, we will have a chance. Uh, we'll have a chance uh, to meet you live, so we can repeat our invitation for you to come to Katowice, to Poland, and yeah. uh, to give uh, a lectures for the Masters of Architecture series, not only online but live here in Poland. Yeah. Uh, so thank you to all of you for being with us. We invite you to follow our social media profiles uh, on uh, Masters okay. of Architecture on Instagram, on Twitter, or on Facebook. So Takahari, once again, big thank you. And uh, applause. Thank you. Really <laughs> looking forward to see you physically here yeah, in yeah. Libyz and Poland. Yeah, see have, you. Yeah, have, thank you very much. We have already thank you very much. Bye. 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 I see you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye, friends. Bye. 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 Bye.